Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Every now and then I'll receive an email from someone. They're new to the world of Lightroom. They're watching one of my videos on Lightroom, and in the video I'm using Lightroom Classic. Well, they have Lightroom Desktop loaded on their computer, and they're not seeing the same functionality. So, of course, they're confused. So, I thought I'd do this video because there's actually five different versions of Lightroom and the functionality is in common between all of them. So in this video, I want to talk about each of the five versions, what are advantages and disadvantages of each, and some basic functionality you should know about each. Now I'm going to start out with the granddaddy of them all, Lightroom Classic. Now this was more recently called Lightroom Classic. This is really Lightroom. Uh, from day one, we always called this Lightroom. This is a non-destructive raw editor. You import your images into it. The edits are kept in the catalog. Uh, the images themselves are kept locally, either on your local hard drive or an external hard drive. They're not necessarily kept up in the cloud. They're stored locally. Um, this has a number of different modules. We're in the library module now. This is where you would organize your images and rate them and call them. We have the develop module. This is where you actually do your edits on your images. And then we have several um, uh, modules as well, a map module, book module, slideshow module, print module, and web module. So this is the original Lightroom, and this is the application that I use for most of my videos because this is still of all the five different versions of Lightroom, this is the one that people most often use. Now there's another version of Lightroom that is called Lightroom Desktop. This used to be called Lightroom CC, and many of us, before it really had a name that was different than Lightroom Classic, used to call it Lightroom in the Cloud. That's because the images in Lightroom Desktop are kept in the cloud, and you're able to access them in other versions of Lightroom that I'll talk about in a moment. Um, other than that, it does use the same processing engine as Lightroom Classic, so you'll get the same edits from this version of Lightroom compared to Lightroom Classic. Um, there are some slight differences, though. Uh, one difference is it doesn't have all the modules that Lightroom Classic has. So it doesn't have the map, the web, the print, the slideshow, the book module. It just has on the left something which is kind of akin to the library module. Um, it's folders and it has albums. Now in Lightroom Classic, you don't have albums, you have collections. Uh, collections and albums, for all intents and purposes, are the same thing. It's just Lightroom Classic calls them cl uh, collections, and Lightroom Desktop calls them albums. Now, one thing that is um, interesting about Lightroom Classic, I mentioned that all the images in Lightroom Classic are stored, stored locally, either on the local uh, hard drive or on an external hard drive. You have the option, though, of sharing images from Lightroom Classic to Lightroom Desktop. You could do that by having them in a collection and then clicking a little box over here on the left, and then it will upload smart previews of the images to the cloud, and they will automatically show up in Lightroom Desktop. And other versions of Lightroom that I'm going to talk about in a moment, so that you could edit them on these other versions if you want to. Now, when you subscribe to uh, whatever Adobe package you have, your monthly subscription, you get a specific amount of cloud storage space. With Lightroom Desktop, there's no importing. You add photos. So up here at the top left, you'll see Add Photos. When you add photos, you use up some of that cloud storage space. Curiously, if you're in Lightroom Classic and you share a collection with the cloud and it uploads those smart previews, it doesn't take any of your cloud storage space. So you're not 
um, using any of it because their smart preview is considerably smaller than a raw file, let's say. So that is uh, something to know uh, because if you have limited cloud storage with your Adobe subscription, just know that when you're sharing the collections from Lightroom Classic to the cloud, you're not using up any of that space. Now back to Lightroom Desktop for a moment. I mentioned that on the left is kind of akin to the library module. It has folders and it has albums. And you don't import images into Lightroom Desktop. You add photos. So you have that kind of difference. Now over on the right you have what is akin to the develop module. And it has as I mentioned, the same processing engine as Lightroom Classic, and it has most of the same controls. Um, but what it doesn't have, at least as uh, at this point of me making this video, uh, what it doesn't have is in the local adjustments, it doesn't have any masking. If you're familiar with Lightroom Classic, if you do a local adjustment to an image, you can see at the bottom, there's a range mask. Um, that is not available at this time in Lightroom Desktop. Um, Adobe has said that it will be added to Lightroom Desktop very soon. So that's um, something if you often use masking with your local adjustments. And when I say local adjustments, I'm talking about the brush, the radial filter, and the graduated filter. So if you're also often using those range masks, they're not available right now in Lightroom Desktop, but check every time they update it, check to see if they add it. Now, if you look at the actual tabs themselves, they have one called Light. That is kind of akin to the um, basic tab. Let me close that down. The basic tab in Lightroom. And they, all, they have a lot of the tabs uh, nested together. You could see they have one called Point Curve that, of course, is uh, the same as the tone curve, but it's nested into the light uh, category. Also, they have color, and nested in there, they have something called color mixer, which is the HSL tab in Lightroom Classic. Um, and they also have nested in their color grading, uh, which is, of course, has its own tab in Lightroom Classic. Um, and, you know, so on. So if you go through these tabs, you'll find that a lot of uh, stuff is nested in there. Uh, so this is the most common question I get is people see my videos on Lightroom Classic and they're using this version of Lightroom and they can't really follow along because it is really considerably different. Now let's talk about the next two versions of Lightroom. Uh, they're both Lightroom Mobile, but there are two different versions of Lightroom Mobile, mobile and we're going to cover that next. I mentioned there are two different versions of Lightroom Mobile. The first one we're going to look at is Lightroom Mobile for a tablet device. I have it running on an iPad Pro. So you're looking at Lightroom Mobile on an iPad Pro. Now Lightroom Mobile is meant to be a companion application to Lightroom Desktop. So cosmetically it's pretty much the same and functionally it's pretty much the same. It's just in this case on a tablet. On the left hand side you have folders and you have albums just like Lightroom Desktop. And if you want to work on an image you just tap on it and then it will open up into what's akin to the develop module in Lightroom Classic similar to Lightroom um, Desktop. You have the same tabs like color effects, detail optics and inside of those tabs you also have the nested uh, controls similar to Lightroom Desktop. For example inside color we have a color mix tab. We also have color grading in there as well. Um, inside the light tab, we also have a tone curve right here. So you can see that um, it's pretty much Lightroom desktop for, in this case, an iPad. If you have an Android tablet, you'd have the um, Android version of Lightroom mobile, and it would be pretty much the same. Now it too, uh, in the local adjustments, lacks any of the range masking that um, is available in Lightroom Classic. Also, an added feature, I guess, of the mobile version is you could take a photo 
with your device. So I could take a photo with my iPad from inside a Lightroom. And when I do that, it will show up in my Lightroom um, mobile on my iPad. It will also show up on Lightroom desktop. And it will also show up on my Lightroom mobile for my iPhone, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, also, that type of image that you take, if you take an image from within Lightroom on an iPad or an iPhone, it does use up your cloud storage space. So that counts against your storage. Uh, but it's meant to be, I guess, used on the run. You know, So when you need to do some um, editing, uh, you could uh, keep your images in the cloud and edit them on a tablet device uh, very effectively and easily. Now let's talk about that other version of Lightroom, Lightroom Mobile for a smartphone. All right, this is the smartphone version of Lightroom. I have it running on an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Of course, they have an Android version as well. And again, it's cosmetically very similar to Lightroom Desktop and the Lightroom Mobile version I just showed you for a tablet. Um, it's meant, again, to be a companion application with those other two apps. Um, when you first open it, you'll be in what's akin to the library module. On the left-hand side, you'll have folders and albums, and you could pick a, uh, an image to work on. As soon as you tap on it, you'll open in what's akin to the develop module of Lightroom Classic. On the right-hand side, you have the various uh, tabs that are in Lightroom Desktop, except this time they have icons. There's no word there. So it may be um, a little more difficult uh, for you to kind of find your way around the smartphone version of Lightroom until you get used to it. Similar to Lightroom Desktop and Lightroom for tablets, the local adjustments do not have any masking, any range masks at all. So uh, they're just kind of straight local adjustments. Um, as I mentioned, I want to reiterate, um, Adobe has said that the desktop version of Lightroom will have range masks added to them soon. I'm not sure what soon means when that happens, um, when that is going to happen. And I'm not sure if the mobile versions will have range masks added to them as well. But as of right now, uh, there's only a depth mask available in the um, tablet or in the, um, I'm sorry, in the um, mobile versions of Lightroom. Uh, but beyond that, as I mentioned, you have controls that are kind of uh, odd. They're, they're kind of have these icons and you have to kind of uh, tap on it and see exactly what is in there. And you could see there are nested controls as well. Here I hit the light uh, heading and inside of that, we have the tone curve. The tone curve shows up right on the image. Um, we also then could go down through um, the actual like color tab, and then the color grading is here. Up top, we also have the color mix, which is akin to the HSL tab in Lightroom Classic, and so on. So everything is here. It's just you may have to search for it a little more than... Uh, especially if you're used to, let's say, Lightroom Classic, you'll have to search for the actual uh, control you want. When you're done editing the image, you could um, get a link so that you could share it uh, because these images, like Lightroom Desktop and Lightroom for the tablet, these images are stored in the cloud. Uh, so you could get a link to so people to watch it. You could export it to a camera roll, export it to files. Um, you could export it as, so export it just you know, as a, a, you know, whatever type of image you want to export it as. Um, again, you could take an image with your smartphone from within Lightroom, and that image will show up on all your devices, uh, being the a desktop computer with the desktop version, or your tablet with the tablet version of the mobile app, or, uh, of course, in the smartphone version of the mobile app. So those are four different versions of Lightroom. That is Lightroom Classic, Lightroom Desktop, and two different versions of Lightroom Mobile. Let's talk about that fifth version of Lightroom.
The fifth and final version of Lightroom is the web version. Uh, if you go to lightroom.adobe.com and log in, it will open up all the images in your Adobe Cloud account into the web version of Lightroom. From within your browser, you'll be able to cull and edit images. Now, cosmetically, it's very similar, almost identical to the desktop version of Lightroom. So the desktop version, the two mobile versions, and the web version of Lightroom are all sibling applications. They're all very similar. If you're familiar with one, you'll probably be familiar with all of them. Now, over on the left-hand side, like the desktop version, you have folders and you have albums. You could add photos by clicking Add Photos. They'll be uploaded to your cloud account on Adobe and they will count against um, your storage space. Uh, when you want to edit an image, you could just click on it and it will open up into the edit section of the web browser's um, Lightroom. You could click on the edit tab or edit button over here on the far right. And you have those same kind of nested tabs. You have light and in from within light, you have a point curve. You have color and from within color, you have a color mixer and color grading. You have effects for um, adding texture, clarity, dehaze, a vignette, all that in here. And again, it's very similar to the uh, Lightroom desktop, which was um, what I covered earlier. Um, and it's, you know, something that once you get used to the controls, you'll be able to do this with the Lightroom desktop version the web version, and really the mobile versions as well. Maybe with the smartphone version, you have to kind of learn the icons uh, for the edit section because there's no words there. There's not light and color. They have icons. But once you get used to that, you should be able to work fine. One thing I should add that presets, anything you install, even third party, if you purchased my presets, and you install them in the classic version of Lightroom, uh, they won't automatically load into uh, Lightroom Desktop or Lightroom Mobile. What you have to do is load them into Lightroom Desktop as well. And once they're there, uh, Lightroom Desktop will then upload them to the cloud and then they'll be available in the web version of Lightroom, this version, and both mobile versions of Lightroom. So, And presets, they all work because Lightroom, across all five of these different versions of Lightroom, uses the same processing engine. All the presets are compatible across all the different versions of Lightroom. So just, you have to do two installs, basically. You have to install them in the classic version, and then you'll have to install them in the desktop version. Then once you do that, you'll have them in all five versions of Lightroom. So. That's Lightroom. That's all the different versions as it is now. Now I want to just mention again that Adobe about once a month, maybe once every two months, they update these versions of Lightroom and they usually add features. So depending on where you're, when, you, when you're watching this, um, you may find something in one of your versions of Lightroom that you're using that is missing from my video today. That's just because Adobe added it after I did this video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.